Hey, Confirmation families, hope you're doing well today. Hey, uh, as I'm beginning this recording today, a uh, question for you, a little feedback in terms of being able to see and hear these videos. Um, let me know if they're not working for you, and I can do some adjustments on this end. Um, but uh, I test them before I send them out. They sound and look okay to me, but uh, if they're not for you, I need to know that. Uh, so this is, uh, we're looking at the second petition of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, this is the worksheet that we will review on January 20th. Uh, so you'll need to watch this obviously before then so that the students can be prepared uh, for class that night. So this is the second petition of the Lord's Prayer. But before we do that, of course, we've got jokes and we've gotten to my favorite part of all of these jokes that I've saved over the years. They are puns. And if you don't know what a pun is, it is a funny, ironic play on words that usually sound the same. Uh, so I love puns. Uh, I don't know whether you do or not, but I will get a kick out of these. So these are uh, six creative puns for educated minds. The roundest night at King Arthur's round table was circumference. He acquired, he acquired his size by eating too much pie. That's not P-I-E, it's P-I. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I saw an eye doctor on an Alaskan island, but it turned out to be an optical illusion. Look up illusion, not illusion. She was only a whiskey maker, but I loved her still. A rubber band pistol was confiscated in algebra class because it was a weapon of math disruption. And finally, no matter how much you push the envelope, it will still be stationary. I'm guessing that the kids might need some explanation on this, parents. I'm not for sure. Kids, if you get these, kudos to you. Hopefully, parents, um, you get these. I love puns, but that's just me. I'm a nerd. Okay, let's get into the second petition of the Lord's Prayer, which is, Thy kingdom come. What does this mean, Luther asks, and you... Uh, students will memorize, the kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. How does God's kingdom come? So the Lord's prayer comes to the world. Uh, he doesn't, he's not waiting for us to pray for it, to send it. He doesn't need our prayers to help him. He, that happens on its own, but we're playing, praying that it would come to our life. So that's kind of what that means in modern day Mabley terms. So how does God's kingdom come, Luther asks? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit so that by his grace we believe his holy word and we lead godly lives now in time and there in heaven in eternity. Okay, thy kingdom come. What is the kingdom of God? And there's a couple different ways to answer this. And so questions one or two on this worksheet, we'll look at it in kind of two different ways. They're both correct, but they're different ways of answering the question, what is the kingdom of God? Uh, this first one I draw uh, almost um, 
I say verbatim, but very closely you find this in the exclam ec the back part, the explanation part um, of your small catechism. So, the kingdom of God. And when you think king, um, think uh, Middle Ages uh, knights and kings and queens and courts and castles that sort of thing. I think that is a helpful way to think of it because if we look at that time in European history, you had a king and all of the people in his land um, worked for him in a sense, served him in a sense, but he also was the one who would protect them and, pr and provide for them. Uh, so I, I think in some sense there is that is a helpful um, way to think of this. We don't have really kings or kingdoms like that today. They do in England, but that's all just sort of kind of for show. They really don't have any kind of power like they did back um, in centuries uh, past. Um, uh, children, I wouldn't suggest you watch this, but parents, if you uh, have watched Game of Thrones, um, you'll kind of have a sense on that. Uh, I'm reading a great series right now that's a historical fiction that takes place in England um, going all the way back to 1000 AD and then a couple different other time periods. And certainly you get this sense from those books um, how this worked, how you had sort of a leader, uh, a um, aristocrat, a ruler um, who lived better, who was, but was more powerful, but also cared for and provided for and protected um, those people that lived in their lands. So anyway, um, so the gracious, the kingdom of God is the gracious rule. He rules over us and the reign, again, think a king's reign of God, but it's gracious. Um, yes, um, he is all powerful. Um, but he is also very gracious and loving to us. So it's not a um, very negative sense like you might see in the Middle Ages where uh, the peasants uh, suffered um, and lived in squalor while the king lived separated um, and ruled harshly over the people. It's not the sense here. Um, and this kingdom of God was promised in the Old Testament. So all the way from when God created the universe up until uh, Jesus became incarnate, took on flesh in Mary's womb. All of that time prior to this kingdom of God was promised. And then with Jesus, um, his life, death, and his resurrection is where this kingdom is ushered in. Um, so when he became incarnate, born, lived, had his public ministry when he was 30 to 33, and then in his life, death, and resurrection, that's when this kingdom of God was brought to our world. So I, one of the Gospels, I forget which one, I think it's Matthew, the first words that we hear Jesus speak in that Gospel is repent, then he says, for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here now among us. So that means that you and I today know that the kingdom of God is here now as well. We may not always be able to see it with our eyes. The world is broken and, and we still sin and suffer and all of that. But we do understand that the kingdom is here. It's veiled. It's hidden right now. So, okay. Um, part four to this answer is the kingdom of God comes to us today. Again, hidden, not obvious. It's not a, a king riding in a chariot on, or on a powerful horse in a parade. But the kingdom of God comes by the power of the Spirit. The Spirit is the one who brings it. And he does it through, and hopefully you're beginning to learn this term and remember this term, the means of grace, God's word and sacraments. That's where we see God's kingdom come to us us today. And then finally, this kingdom of God, it will be brought to its completion, its fulfillment, and then it won't be hidden anymore. We'll see him in all power and glory when Jesus returns on the last day.
So that's one way to answer this question, what is the kingdom of God? The other way is more of a, a location answer to the question, what is the kingdom of God? And we see the kingdom of God in three distinct places, categories, areas. One is the kingdom of power. So this is God's rule over the universe. I think of if you see a very uh, beautiful sunset or say you're at the Grand Canyon and it's beautiful and awe-inspiring. Awe if you see uh, a majestic animal, uh, these are ways in which, at least in my mind, we first think, gosh, um, you can tell that there's a creator and he has given us this beautiful creation to enjoy. Um, that's where we see God's kingdom of power as he rules over all creation or the universe. Now, what differentiates this kingdom of power versus the next kingdom is that we can see God ruling in his kingdom and power through death, uh, through destruction, where we see God's judgment and anger against sin and a fallen creation. Only in God's kingdom of grace, uh, and we think of that in terms of the church, where we see God's gracious and loving rule through his word and sacraments. So if you want to find a God who loves you and forgives you, you got to go to church for that. That's where God says he can be found in this gracious kingdom, the kingdom of grace. Um, and I've actually had somebody, a member of this congregation who no longer attends, who you know made the joke that, well, pastor, I can worship just as well sitting in a boat on the lake on Sunday morning. No, you're, you're worshiping God's kingdom of power there. You're not receiving God's kingdom of grace. Um, and then also the entire, so we see this then in the entire Christian church on earth. So that's how that would finish. Uh, the third place area um, that we identify the kingdom of God is the kingdom of glory. And there should be some hint there on where this kingdom is. It's the, the angels and it's the entire church, your loved ones who have died in the faith um, that are in heaven. So in the traditional liturgy for communion, we say uh, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud or praise thy holy name evermore saying, and then we sing, holy, 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 um, Lord God of Sabbath. Okay, so what are we praying for? If we have identified, answered, what is this kingdom? So what are we actually asking God to do here? That we ask that God would help us in our faith, that he would work faith in us, he would strengthen faith in us, and that we would live in that faith, that we would live according to it. We would, we would do things that would please God. We would love God and love our neighbor, that summary of the Ten Commandments. Uh, we would share the gospel, those sorts of things. So again, it's for us individually. We know that God's kingdom comes without our prayers, but we're asking for us. Um, and that we pray that the more people learn of and believe in, that more people um, come to faith um, and believe in Jesus, and he can use us to bring that about. We're also praying that God, would, again, would use us to spread his word and share his uh, love, his good news, the gospel with other people. And that's how God uses us to increase his kingdom. Uh, so we can be a part of that growth ourselves. Although God is the one, again, who can use us uh, and he brings people to faith. Uh, and then finally, that he will return quickly and take us to heaven. Uh, during this last year, during uh, COVID, um, with the riots last summer and all the craziness with the elections and what's going on in D.C., I find myself thinking of this portion um, when I pray this even more, come quickly, Lord Jesus, it says at the end of the book of Revelations. Okay, question three. How can we know that God's kingdom comes? This is something I want uh, students and families 
uh, to do together. Read this Isaiah uh, passage, uh, Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, and then you know answer, how does uh, God give us assurance in his word that this will happen? And then answer the question, how do we know, how do we see God's kingdom come in power, in grace, and in glory? How can God? Uh, God show how does God show us that this is actually happening now so that's it for the second petition uh, again um, this that last question there will be considered homework I guess uh, look for the students to have completed that when they come to class on January 20th actually that's my wife's birthday I won't give you how many years old she'll be because I don't know if she'll be mad at me or not um, Anyway, hope uh, you have a great rest of your day and week.